Right, good morning everyone and welcome to the home base meetup for November 2021. This is the school mat session. As always, the home base meetup's overview. These meetings are for you to cover all of our home base products, the student information system, instructional improvement system, school net, the learning management system, open education resources, evaluations, digital literacy, and supplemental math. Our purpose, as always, is to foster positive and productive field-based relationships with you all, communicate product-specific information, elicit feedback from you to inform state-level decision makers, provide collaborative time in problem solving, and provide coordination between different DPI groups that serve the end users. Our presentations are all linked here, and we will shift over to the SchoolNet slide shortly, and we'll drop that link in the chat. And our upcoming schedule for home-based meetups this week. Tomorrow is your double dose with PowerSchool in the morning at 10 and learning.com at 1. Thursday will be Canvas and Friday go open NC. And all the links are there for you to register for those other sessions. And our schedule for the remainder of this school year, we have shifted the rest of the home base meetups to be virtual as well. So we will see you again in February and then again the first week of May. And finally, some general updates for the home base meetups. Uh, Power School, we did just have a maintenance weekend and an upgrade to version 20.11.4. And our next IPT, Initial Product Training Certification course for Power School coordinators will be March 7th through 11th. Keep an eye out for registration information um, in the NCSIS bulletin. SchoolNet is gearing up to launch Transcend for next school year, and we'll talk about that a little bit today, but if you are interested, please feel free to reach out. Um, there are some adjustments in the Canvas world with the Priority Service Team. They are adding more help for North Carolina customers, and Corey will talk to you more about that on Thursday, I'm sure. Go open and see updates. Remember to put resources out there. Our resources are growing every day. And an update that hub admins can now completely manage their hub on your own. Our tier one allotments for learning.com have been released. Keep an eye out for those. In the Nisus world, we had an update to the central office view only role that has been implemented. And hopefully you caught Cami yesterday talking about that in great detail. And if not, we will have the recording out for you probably by next week. Training. If you do believe your PSU or you yourself needs training on any of these products, feel free to reach out to me and my team. We are always here to help you. And finally, some updates on the home base survey. Thank you all so much for taking it and for encouraging your colleagues and teachers to take it. We had over 4,000 responses statewide. And we are using the data from that survey to determine our next steps on all of our products. So thank you again for completing that. A reminder of our social media. We do post Did You Know features every Wednesday. And these are all of our various hashtags and call signs. Please feel free to connect with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We are there for you. And finally, here is our team for this school year. And before I shift over into the SchoolNet slides, did we have any questions or any on, anyone on my team? Did I miss anything in this opening? Well, as I said, welcome again. I am John Mars, your SchoolNet product manager here at NCDPI and professional learning specialist for all home-based applications. And joining me today, I also have Catherine Simone and Amanda Phillips. They are our North Carolina team from Pearson, 
if you guys would like to introduce yourselves. I was on mute, sorry. <laughs> Always got to do that once a presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, how are you today? Uh, Catherine Simone um, for Pearson for North Carolina. Um, please, during this presentation, just jump in, ask questions, and participate. I look forward to working with you this morning. Good morning, Amanda Phillips. Um, I'll be here, um, and I'm here to answer questions as well. Awesome. Thank you. And to all of our guests today, please feel free to drop in the chat your name and what school or PSU you're from so that we all get kind of an idea of who is here today. And while you do that, I will jump into our objectives for today. So we have some SchoolNet and Transcend updates I'll share with you all. Some information on our state assessments, always evolving. As always, we'll jump into our breakout rooms. And then today's training is on custom reporting in SchoolNet. So Catherine is going to kind of give us the overview and then see if there's anything specific that she can show you that might be particularly uh, relevant for you. And then finally, we'll wrap up with reflections and kind of debrief from the breakout rooms at the end. So SchoolNet updates and Transcend updates. I'll start with SchoolNet. Um, so as always, I, I had this first bullet point on here last time, but I thought it was worth keeping for this time. Um, please be sure to check who we have listed as your PSU SchoolNet lead and SchoolNet backup. That link on point 1A will take you to the DPI website where we have that all listed. If you do see that those are out of date, please email Yolanda with that update and her email address is on the slide as well. Um, this is sort of our, our authoritative source of, you know, who's in charge of SchoolNet for your PSU. So please make sure we have up-to-date data. As far as SchoolNet versions, we are now on version 23.0.5 um, that had just really some miscellaneous fixes across the system. I think there were some improvements to text-to-speech and a few other little bug fixes. Um, our new math items, some of you did report that there were missing images in the new math items we added. Those have been fixed. Um, so if you search for a date added of October 12th, you will find all of the new items in the core curriculum areas for the school year. We updated them all to have a search date of 10-12 and all of those images are fixed. That said, we discovered a new itsy bitsy little issue with that. Um, for some of the math items, when you print them, the math symbols are coming out as red question marks. Um, they display fine in, in test nav and with online test administrations, but they're just not um, rendering properly when printed. So we are working to fix that issue as well. So know that that's going on right now. Um, we also had some new CTE items and those new CTE items also had a little issue with images, but those have also been fixed. Um, so if you are after new CTE items, search by a date added of November 2nd and you should find all of those. <coughs> Um, on the PD side, um, I heard in, I think, the last home base meetup and our last home base advisory board meeting um, that you guys would like the live webinars to come back. So I am working on getting a schedule and some topics kind of worked out. Um, so look for those PD webinars to return starting probably in January. Um, those will not replace the self-paced NESIS courses I've been working on, so those will continue and remain available. So, new avenues for PD. Hopefully that is helpful for you and your staff in your PSU. Quick usage update. This is kind of a, a three-year trend. Um, slide. The first number you see there were our submissions at the end of October 2019. 
So these are all test submissions, how many students hit submit on a test. You can see we dropped off for October 2020. And in October 2021, we are kind of making up some of that ground, but we are still lagging a little bit behind in usage um, as far as test submissions go. So hopefully uh, with the new state assessments we have out and with performance based measures and some of the newer things, we can start to get these numbers trending back upward um, as we go through the rest of the school year. Um, some transcend updates, and I do have the little video embedded on this slide that's going to autoplay for us silently. Um, but transcend, if you missed it, is computer adaptive testing. It's sort of an add on extra module for SchoolNet covering grades three through eight, ELA and math. And what's special about this versus other computer adaptive testing platforms is that you can actually customize the tests per your PSU pacing guides. So you can pick exactly which standards are going to be assessed for each of the three administrations throughout the year. For the 2022-2023 school year, Transcend is exiting the pilot stage at $4 per ADM, and that will be only for your third through eighth graders who will actually use it. Um, we are working on that opt-in and all of that information, but I wanted to go ahead and give you this information so that you kind of have it in the back of your head as you're starting to think about budgets and things. Um, certainly look out for more on this coming soon. Um, but for now, if you are interested, please feel free to reach out to me um, and we can get you all of the information and, and stuff like that. I know that they have been making a ton of improvements to it um, based on our pilot feedback. And so I'm excited to see this product come out of pilot and become its own thing. Catherine, anything you want to add there on Transcend? No, that was great, John. Thank you. Uh, like you said, we'll have more information coming um, as far as if your district would like to um, have an uh, individual meeting to see more um, regarding the product. Absolutely. All right, next up is some information on our state assessments. Um, like I said, always evolving. Um, so, as before, we do have the state assessments recommended out to districts based on the preferences that were submitted in the survey that we did back in August. Uh, there is a link there to a Google Sheet that has all of the test IDs for all of the state assessments this year. Um, a few updates. So the release test, EOCs, EOGs, those are out. Um, the NC final exams, semester one NC final exams were already out last time we met. We just finished pushing out additional copies of those NC final exams to use for CDM, credit by demonstrated mastery, or credit recovery. I think they're named credit recovery in the system. So those have been added to the sheet. Keep in mind the CDM copy of the test was recommended to the district level only. It was not recommended or assigned down to your teachers just because of the sort of intent of that test. And we will be releasing a third copy of the NC final exams for second semester uh, coming up here after the winter break. Uh, the Certica ELA testlets for BOI and MOI administrations are out. Um, we did get a report from a few of you folks that we had enabled text-to-speech on those Certica ELA testlets, and that, that was accidental as we were trying to get everything out. So that has been disabled on the Certica ELA testlets so that that reflects the accommodations they might receive on a state assessment. The Certica math testlets are still out, and we still have the NCTPI math sets for BOI administrations. Keep an eye out for EOI and, and other administrations a little bit later on. And finally, a, a new shiny thing 
Um, the CTE division is working with me. We are delivering a credential attainment assessment for the IP 11 course via SchoolNet. So this assessment has been assigned to IP 11 courses. There were 53 PSUs that had active IP 11 courses when we went to assign it. If your PSU does have some IP 11 courses and you seem to have been missed, or if you newly add a section of it um, that didn't exist before and we seem to have missed you, please pop in a ServiceNow ticket just to let us know and we will get that IP 11 assessment out for you. Any questions from, from the crowd on state assessments or on IP 11 or really any of this stuff uh, John, before we shift? One. Yes. Um, so the final exams and the release test, just a reminder, while they are um, assigned to the districts that requested or recommended um, to everyone, uh, please note we did receive a couple service now cases um, regarding visibility of the items. So while you can locate the test with the test ID, the content is restricted, um, and that's per uh, the assessment uh, folks. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Great point. So the, the release test, EOGs, EOCs, and NCFEs, we have licensing restrictions on that content. So we are unable to allow viewing of the content outside of just the test administration. Our chat seems to be quiet. So we will go ahead and move forward into our breakout rooms. Um, I always underestimate the amount of time that we should take in these. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm going to guesstimate it at 20 minutes, um, but we'll we'll kind of see how the uh, the conversation goes in in each of these and just kind of gauge it by ear. So our topics for this time around, so breakout room one will be if you have any questions or, or comments about state assessments, the IP 11 credential assessment, or about transcend, really anything that's that's school district test or benchmark related um, is, is kind of what I was getting at here. Um, is there anything we can do to assist with those things? And then the second breakout room will be, have you tried the performance-based assessments we went over in the last home-based meetup yet? Um, or do you have any other examples within your PSU of maybe some more novel uses of SchoolNet, maybe K2 things or performance-based things, or maybe an interesting application for answer key only assessments? All right, I believe we have everyone back now from the breakout rooms. So next up is our training time on custom reporting. Um, so Catherine, I will just turn it over to you. Um, or do you want me to drive slides and then transition? Like either way. Um, we can do the slides first, sure. And then right. um, and then I'll pick up the screen and share the training site. Sure. All right, cool. Here you go. Okay. So, um, before I start the custom reporting, I just want to give some um, clarification on this. There are many uh, built in reports in SchoolNet, which you're probably accustomed to using. Um, the, this uh, presentation is based on custom reporting, which gives you a few um, added features over the already built in reports. I mean, it's just that it's custom. So, uh, when John and I were talking about it, we're thinking about different scenarios. So you go to the reporting dashboard normally, and you pull results for tests and you're able to compare multiple tests, um, either by standards or by scores. Um, and you can look at class level school level, um, even down to the student level. Um, to compare assessments. When we look at custom reporting, it gives us the option um, to do a couple things, to pull other data that is not assessment data into the report. 
So um, in my experience, um, custom reports I've created over time for districts include uh, maybe benchmark data, um, standardized test data, um, attendance is a big comparison when we're looking at um, assessment data and then pulling in attendance data. Um, sometimes um, districts need reports that isolate um, multiple tests uh, against subgroups and then pulling in other pieces, um, basically any demographic data. So an easy way to think of it is if you go to an individual child's profile, student profile in SchoolNet, um, those features that you see on that overview page, uh, race, um, attendance, et cetera, school, grade level, um, all of those things can be pulled in to a custom report, all right? So that's one way um, to look at it. Another way is that um, I know we have not loaded standardized test data in a while in, deep, uh, in North Carolina, um, but previously we were pulling in the um, EOGs and EOCs. Um, there's a way that you can look at the benchmark data compared to the standardized test data. Um, and also you can review the information over time, so year to year. Um, and that's another um, great way to look at the um, groups of students' performance, okay? Um, so when we look, there's a link there at the bottom on this slide, um, just to let you know for custom reporting. Um, and it's a video um, from the SchoolNet training site. Um, it's probably better than watching me do it, but uh, just to let you know that the link is there. Um, John, can you jump to the next slide? So this is just a recap of some of the options that you could um, pull in. And um, I maybe failed to mention enrollment, um, school enrollment, um, but that includes grades, school, et cetera. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, before I get started on this, I just want to um, give a precursor to this. The slides are general delect. Uh, general directions on custom reporting, um, just by the nature of custom reporting, that's what it is. It's going to be very specific and tailored to your district um, or your school um, and the needs of, um, you know, what who the audience is for the actual report. So I'm going to go through the, the general pieces, um, how to get started. But I want to offer this, if you have a specific need in your district for a custom report and you get started on one of these and you're stuck, please reach out to us through ServiceNow. We'll, I'll pick it up and um, I can set up time with you to walk you through um, the specifics of the report that your district or school needs, okay? Um, so, uh, just because I am more comfortable working in live site, like I said, um, these slides are um, general directions. So I'm going to breeze through these and then I'm going to jump through the training site to show you some actual reports and examples that I've put together um, and show you how you can um, get started. So just like all reporting in the left hand navigation, you're going to go to reporting when you click the arrow. Um, we are accustomed to going to the reporting dashboard, but for custom reports, we're going to click build a report now and click just that custom report. Next slide, please, John. There are three, actually four parts to building a custom report. You need to just define your student set. So the who um, of the report, who are we creating a report about? We need to create, we need to look at the what what data do we want to pull in, okay? And then the how, how are we going to present it? And there's a couple different ways you'll see of how we can present the data, meaning the view, what it looks like to others. Um, and then the fourth step is to save it so you can reuse it. 
um, the really cool thing about reports is it's kind of like um, a test. We create a test in SchoolNet. We, you know, it's finished. We save it, and we need to make another test. But it's um, as we heard in one of our breakout groups, uh, it's a follow-up test. So we gave the first test and we got the results, and we need to, you know, give something else. I can copy that test and modify the questions, delete questions, add questions, and change it. Same thing with reports. We get a base report, and then I can copy it. I save my original, I can copy it, I can tweak it, and I get little nuances of change with that custom report, okay? So this screen here, when you go back, if you go to review this one, this is called defining a student set. And in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a link, the underlying text that says define and save a student set. And it is much more detailed than I could fit on this slide. Um, but this is screenshots of saving a student set. Once you click that custom report, you get the top left hand screenshot and you have the option of defining a student set or choosing a saved student set. And I will show you um, where that where I saved one um, and how you can do that. Once you click define a student set, I always start with enrollment because I want to know who's in my class, um, depending or who's going to be in my report, depending on the timing of the report, meaning this year or last year, you may want to choose um, under number two on the last screenshot, current enrollment or total enrollment. Um, you can obviously uh, narrow down the report by school, uh, grade level, um, or use all six graders across the district if you wanted to. Um, but there are filters and you'll see that you'll see that when you get, pick enrollment, you have lots of options, you apply the filter, and then you're on to the next stage. You've basically selected the who for your report. Next slide, Jen. Um, once I have the defined student set, that was my filter one where I chose enrollment. You always have an option of setting another filter. So when I said that you can create a base report, um, my scenario would be I would base, create a base report with all my sixth graders, save it. Then I can come back and add a new filter and say maybe I'm only looking at students, um, AIG students or um, English language learners. And that would be under programs. And you see on the screen now where I'm showing create a filter two, and um, I can pick programs and I can pick a filter two. Okay. Once I've decided the who of the report, then I the box there where it says finish defining, you have a couple options. You can build a custom report or you can continue to analysis spreadsheet. So let me explain the difference for those right here. An analysis spreadsheet is the only report in which you actually see the students' names in the report. It, the name of it, analysis spreadsheet, is just that. It's an interactive spreadsheet within the platform and you can see the students' names with the data, um, various points of data that you've chosen, and you can click on it, rearrange it, et cetera. A custom report, um, my pet name for custom reports, is, um, they're my show and tell reports. So if I have um, a board meeting or I'm presenting to a large group of people, and I in no way want to show the students' names, but I would like to present the data and the results of the data and the correlations that go along with it if I'm pulling in demographic or other types of data, then I'm going to use the first radio button there, which is build a custom report because it's I can 
you'll see in a minute, I can do bar graphs, pie graphs, charts, tables, etc. And it looks pretty for my audience. So it's a lot of show and tell. Um, next slide, please. Um, so here, once I've defined the student set, I'm going to just stick with the top one, building a custom report here. And on the screenshot there at the top, you are going to see that I have some options and I've broken them out in a table at the bottom there, but you can choose that you want this report to focus on standardized test, um, performance by standard, subject, um, benchmark items, uh, school enrollment, etc. Um, I chose to focus on, for these examples, I chose to focus on benchmark test. Um, and once I chose benchmark by subject, um, it's a wizard. It walks you through it. It asks you to pick, do you want to work, focus on elementary school, middle school, high school? Um, do you want to focus on a specific content area, math, ELA, science, the grade level? Um, is there a specific school or would you like to pick multiple schools for your report? And that's what you see in the bottom right hand screenshot. Um, I made some selections so that I could choose my report. I chose benchmark by subject and I can move on from there. Um, next slide, John. So when I click apply, I've now, you'll see in the top there, the first column, um, under custom reports, select viewing options. There's a little column. Thank you, John. Little column there. And that's the who of my report. I can always go back and review. Um, yep, right there. <laughs> right there. I can always go back and review um, who, what students I've brought into my report. In the second column, I'm looking at the data that I'm pulling into my report. Um, I chose middle school. Middle school 2762, just grade six, and I'm only looking at district level benchmarks, and those are the tests that I've chosen. Okay, so what we're looking at now is we're looking at the view options on the bottom screen there. And as you can see, this is where I bring in my show and tell. Do I want this to be a table, a pie chart, a bar graph? a stacked bar graph, a line graph, depending on your need, your audience, and the type of data that you're bringing in, um, you can choose one of these options. But I'm gonna tell you my, se my secret, what I like to do. I always like to save the first one as a table. I get the most options when pulling a table, in table data into a report. So I choose table and I save that. And then that becomes, my uh, master report, I have everything in there that I want and I can go back and change it um, for view if I choose to. So I'm gonna show you the table here. Um, in my columns, think of a, just that, a table. I'm choosing the test administration. Remember there on the top, I have one, two, like seven tests chosen. So I'm gonna choose, choose my test administration. Below that, I want to see the score group. And I want to see in my rows would be the individual classes. You can choose um, to have sub rows or not. There's always a blue button, run the report. And on the next screen, my table's a little messy, but in my mind, I've got everything in there that I need. Again, you see the review at the top of the screen. You get to see everything that you've included in this report. and Right under where it says custom reports benchmark performance by subject, there's a save report button. So I click that and I fill in everything with an asterisk needs to be completed. So you need a name for your report, a description. I just put sample there. Um, Leave it as the first time you save it as a complete report parameters because this is everyone. The only time I ever use report parameters only is when I'm pushing a report out to teachers. The reason being is complete report will save the report with all information. If I am pushing out to teachers, 
I only want them to see the students that they have access to. So there's a little nuance there with the report. There's down here at the bottom organizers. Um, I can certainly add categories for you to choose from. Um, the ones that are set up in the training site right now are benchmark test report, demographic reports, and standardized assessment reports. Um, I've seen everything from these are going to be math and they put the year next to it and it's like folders you'll see in a minute for your report. I click save as new report and when I save this, it's going to show up in my saved reports. Okay, next slide, John. Um, and on this slide, I just gave you a few options. Um, so I saved my table. I can go back, there's an edit button on each of those columns. Remember where you're going to review what you've put into your report. And you can click the edit on viewing options and change that same table I just created into um, a bar graph, a vertical bar graph, and the one on the left, I just threw in, I wanted to sort the students by male and female, just to show you another option. And the tests, and how they are performing on each of those tests. Then the bar graph, um, the legend, although it's tiny there, it's by classes. So again, there's so many options. It's really based on what you are looking for um, to, to show. Again, here you're not seeing any of the students included, but just a little secret, if you click on one of these bars, it will give you the student list of the students in that population. Next slide. Um, I wanted to show this feature. Um, I changed it to a pie graph and there's a feature called paging. So what I did was I limited it to um, those six tests. Um, I paged it by sections. So now we're looking at the same report, nothing changed, but when I click the drop down here, I can change the section. And as you can see, certain classes, each class had a different set of results for the same test. Um, the one on the top right, they didn't even take all the tests. So I can see that readily, um, the difference between all the sections, okay? Um, and paging, you can do paging by sections, by schools, by grade levels, um, by subgroups, a um, lot of different options there as well. Next slide, John. Okay, I'm gonna stop here because I'd like to show you some of those um, because this is the other report, the student analysis report, and I would like to share my screen. Am I able to do that right now, John? Let me see. You should be able to now, yes. Oh, wait. Gonna see if it shows up. There we go. Am I there? Oh, sweet. Okay. All right. So just um, a live recap. Again, this is the training site, please. Just to remind everyone, this is scrambled data. So if it doesn't make sense, there's a reason it's scrambled <laughs> um, on how um, is requesting to shared content. Sure. Um, Okay. Okay. So reporting. Reporting dashboard is what you're accustomed to. I saved a couple of reports. And here, when I go to my saved reports, this is where I'm going to see them. So some of those reports that I just showed you are here. I saved them under Remember, I was talking about folders when you save a report. In my mind, this is a little folder. And I click the down arrow under benchmark test reports. And here are some of my reports that I need for this presentation. So that first one that I said, this is my base one. This is my table. And doesn't really mean much, but I chose the categories. Here are all the tests. I threw in a lot of stuff. It's really not needed there, but I separated the students by male, female, and these are the score groups. 
this pretty much tells me how many students, how many female students scored in the top level for this particular test. If I clicked on the 12, it would open up the list of students that fell into that category. Just a couple things to point out on this screen. Here's the edit button. So if I, this is currently set to middle school, I had to find middle school 2762 that had a lot of cool data that I could use for today, especially with their sixth grade math students. Um, I found these tests that the students had taken. And this is my view of how I want to um, present the information. Let me jump back a minute, go back to my saved reports. The same report that I have just shown you, I've resaved, and now I have that bar graph. Okay. This time, rather than looking at boys and girls, I'm looking at the class sections. And um, let's see, teacher 2YO is the blue here. So I can see uh, that particular teacher's class took this assessment, not this one. They took this one, the next one, and they missed, um, it looks like they did take the last one. So they missed one of the assessments, but easy enough. Again, like I said, these are all clickable. You can see there's a link that comes up and you can go to that. What I want to demonstrate here is I can click this edit button under the test that I'm actually looking for. And this was that screen that you had seen where I chose the type of report by subject. I chose middle school and I knew this one had data because I looked it up. Um, I didn't limit it by grade. I could have, um, but I limited the test by grade. I got to choose that I only wanted to look at district benchmarks, but you can certainly look at school assessments or the state assessments. Um, and then I chose the particular test that I saw um, that I wanted to use. Here, I can deselect, uh, let's see, this is a um, different one, so I'm gonna deselect that. I'm gonna limit it to two just to show you how it changes. I click the viewing options. And right now it's set as a bar graph, but here I can certainly change to anything I, any other view that I like. So uh, let me just switch it to the high graph. You define the criteria. Okay, so um, because I'm looking at tests, I always like to choose the administration of the test, but you can certainly see that if I was choosing a different type of report, I have a lot of options. Am I going to look at race, ethnicity, gender? Um, this particular report is only looking at one school, but I could, if it was at the district level, I could certainly sort by schools. Um, there are other categories here, but please keep in mind that it can only pull the data that your school is sending. So remember, if it's in the student profile and there's data attached to it, then we can certainly um, pull it into a report. So I'm gonna click administration just so I can demonstrate this. Here, um, view data in the cells, you have a lot of options. For the um, reports that I've been showing you, I like to choose percent correct. Um, you can do um, average, um, percent proficient. Um, that would be those score groups, um, you know, the students in the four and five score group, if you chose that, um, but whatever you, you'd like to see there. And then I'm going for the value, okay? For the paging, just to illustrate this, um, I want to separate this by paging. And in the report that I, you had seen in the slide deck, I chose class. So each class, when I page it, gets their own report. Um, if I pick gender, then there would be a, re a pie graph for male and a pie graph for female at that point. If I chose 
um, grade level and this report um, was um, not just sixth grade and I had chose multiple, I could have a report for um, sixth, seventh and eighth. I'm working with middle school, so I'm thinking in terms of sixth, seventh and eighth. How would that be helpful? Um, I've created um, like baseline assessments for advanced courses in high school and maybe we've had um, ninth, tenth, ninth and 10th graders take the baseline assessment because it's going to be an 11th or 12th grade class, but we can sort out by grade level. So there's a lot of different options there, but when I click class and I run my report, You're going to see the pie graph come up. And of course, the training site is pulling all wonky data. So it's going to take me a minute to get it to load. That's why I did my screenshots ahead of time. Well, that's loading. Sorry, I'm not looking at the chat. Does anyone have a question thus far or comment? Um, good. Okay. Um, so. Because I limited it by only, I think, three tests, maybe not every section had the test. So I'm not seeing oh, one test there I, or two tests. I probably should have left all of them in there like I did with my screenshots. But I can certainly take this back, add the tests back in. Um, sometimes with custom reporting, it's trial and error. What I like to ask um, if I'm making a report for someone, um, I like to start at the end. What do you like it to look like? What do you need the data to show? And who, you know, work my way backwards. So what do you want the final product to look like? And how can I get you there? Um, but here's the save button. And I want to show this feature because while it's a simple save, remember, I started with an existing report, that existing pie graph. I can save it as new here, or I can update the first report I opened. And that's a great feature because um, remember, I had my table in the beginning, that was my baseline, and I wanted to change it. So I'm definitely gonna save as new. If I wanted to change that baseline table report, then I would just update. And if I update, it brings in all the information that I saved pre previously, and I just hit save. If I'm saving as new, I'm going to give it a new name, a new description, choose complete report. I could put it in one of these uh, folders, pick a grade level if I want, and a subject if I want, okay? So um, I'm not gonna save that nonsense report, but just to give you some idea. I want to go back to build the custom report at the beginning. And on the slide set, you saw that I showed you I could define a student set and I could start at the very beginning, okay, and pick an enrollment. But I want to show you, I pre prior to this presentation, I saved a student set and I'll show you how I got that in a minute. But another option, rather than starting at the very beginning, is I can choose a student set that I've already created. So I'm going to go here to student, um, choose that. It comes up under uncategor uncategorized, but this is what I named it because it's easy for me to remember. But when I go here, it brings this up and it gives me options. It gives me the options of building any of those show and tell reports that I was talking about, or I can go right to building an analysis spreadsheet that remember, that's the only one that pulls the students names in. Okay, so let me show you how to get a saved student set or how I got my student save set. What I did was I started at the reporting dashboard and I'm thinking in my scenario, I gave a baseline assessment say it was math and we'll keep focusing on those sixth grade students okay and 
um, it was a district level assessment. And just so that it doesn't take too much time, I'm gonna pick this one with 142 students. So I'm pretending this is my baseline assessment and I am going to look at the student analysis report for this. And you're going to see in a minute that this student analysis is similar to the analysis spreadsheets that we're going to create. But I'm not interested in that right now. All I want to do is make a, a student set out of this. So I can take this baseline and compare it to the subsequent assessments that we produce over the school year. There's a button down here, save as a new set. You can click the first student, hold shift, go all the way down to the bottom or wherever you want. What did I do? Sorry, clicked in the wrong place. I went to the student profile by mistake. Oh, there we go. Student analysis. Sorry, I accidentally clicked rather than shift by mistake. Uh, the idea is I'm getting several students. I don't want to click each one. I'm going to select the students that I want using the shift or the control button. If I want them all, I'm going all the way down to the bottom here. I'm going to get all these kids in here. And then I'm going to save them as a new student set. I give it a name like everything else. Description, what do I want to use this for? Um, year long data. and I save my set, okay? Remember, I started this from my baseline test or whatever you choose in the reporting dashboard. Um, I put that together. When I go to build my custom report, I'm gonna save, uh, go to my save student test. It's here under uncategorized. And you're gonna see that sample set that I just started, okay? Any questions at this point? Because from here, I'm gonna segue into the analysis spreadsheet um, and show you some options for that. Uh, we did have one come in through the sure. chat about the paging feature. Oh, yes. Um, so they saw that grade level benchmark was an option for paging and they just wondered what, what that would pull or, or how that would page it out. Um. I would need to look at the production site to see if that is available data for that particular district. Uh, wow. But it should pull if we have it set up in North Carolina, it should pull the benchmarks by grade level. So if I wasn't isolating my report to sixth grade and I was pulling all middle school students, that was the, I could pull like, sixth grade pretest, sixth grade mid-year, sixth grade post in my paging. Does that make sense? Yes, I think so. Okay, thanks, Crystal. I just saw it pop up there. Um, so, um, but again, some of these, um, if your district is not syncing specific data that I'm showing today, then it, it won't be available for a report, just to clarify. So on that note, let me just say this out loud to make sure I'm clear. There's a lot of places in SchoolNet where you see the option under programs to select special education. We do not pull that data in North Carolina. So it's not going to show up on a report. Just want to be really clear on that one, okay? Um, Gotti, I just saw that pop up. I um, hope I read it real quick. Um, but the, it's what, what is coming through from power school. So I'm pretty sure all of you pull gender birth dates. Um, we see the class sections. 
Um, what I'm not sure that everyone sends is AIG data, um, English language learners data that would fall under programs. So those are the things I am unsure of. Um, I can jump in. So everyone should also have that AIG and EL data, just as long as it's entered in PowerSchool, you should have it available in SchoolNet. So for our districts, you should have everything, period. For our charters, AIG is optional for charters. So if your charter is putting AIG info into PowerSchool, you should have it in SchoolNet. But of course, if you're not, then you won't. Okay. See, there you go. There's one, a perfect one. Okay, great. Um, so any other questions before I go to the analysis spreadsheet? Sorry. All right, super. Um, so remember, I started, I'm starting this report just as an example. You don't need to, you can start from scratch, but I'm going to build this report and it says up here, my sample set has 97 students and I'm not building um, a show and tell report. I decided this one's going to be an analysis spreadsheet. Now, what do I mean by analysis spreadsheet? Analysis spreadsheet has the columns. Um, that's what we're talking about. Okay. So on the left here, the students are coming in with those columns that we saw um, from the reporting dashboard. I just mentioned we don't pull special ed. So right away, I'm gonna remove that one. Do I care about race reporting? Maybe you do, I'm gonna leave that. This is the data from the particular test that I pulled originally um, from the reporting dashboard. But what I wanna jump to, and I'm sorry for the behind the screen magic, but I don't want to take too long to load it in the training site. I'm going to jump to my saved reports because I pre-created one for you. In the same way that you just saw me start with the student set, I call this one my spreadsheet standards. And as I mentioned, the analysis spreadsheet, again, is the only one where the students' names come up in the report. Okay. So, while it's actually loading the data, because you see this was a pre-created one, I have 130 student, 32 students in this report. I chose to have, it always defaults the student's name as the first column. You cannot change that information. You can change, rearrange, remove, add, delete, etc. any of the subsequent um, columns, all right? So it's coming in with this data for my particular report. Of course, it's going to go slow because I'm on um, a WebEx and I'm trying to get the training site to do it at the same time. Um, but give me a second. So what my other screen is. What I did was I kept my original test and I added another benchmark, which was a middle school spring. I think it was called an algebra exam. I found. And I pulled raw data, and I also pulled data by standards. So rather than see percentage, the student's percentage, I wanted to look at the number of points that each student achieved on the test. So when you go to an analysis spreadsheet, just a couple, of fe couple features here, you have the hide show. So Although I wanna keep race reporting in there, I'm gonna hide that column, all right? I can expand it so it opens up the whole screen. I'll show you that in a minute. But on that first test, I'm gonna call it my baseline for now. Um, you can change the names of these column headers. I'll show you that in a minute. I wanted to know the percentage the student got correct. Here's the student. Their raw score, how many points, which score group they fell into. And then I added another test and I wanted to know their raw score on that test. So as you can see, we can start stacking up columns here based on any information that you're looking for. So let me show you how I do that. And I'm gonna give you an example of what I did uh, with this last year for Cumberland. Um, when they were in the Transcend pilot, we took the Transcend data um, I pulled students, 
their AIG status, their English language learner status, their grade level, their school, their, um, what else do we pull? Uh, the transcend uh, scores, um, we pulled it by domains, by overall score, and we put it into an analysis spreadsheet. We separated math from ELA. We pushed it out to the teachers so the teachers could look at students' growth across each um, consecutive assessment um, and then sort the columns by, um, you know, any subgroups. All right, so let me just show you if I edit the columns, this is where I can, I can move them around if I want easily. I just drag them and resort them. I can pick additional column data. So I'm just gonna illustrate one example here. I'm gonna go to benchmark. I wanna show you how I can pull it in by standard. Um, you can put filters in. I can't put them in in the training site because it's a little wonky to get the data but I do know that I want math, so I'm gonna leave it there. And I do know that I wanted only a district benchmark, so I'm gonna pull that there. And I do know that the test that I wanted was, sorry, middle school math spring exam, and I want to look at the standards for this particular column. And I am going to look at the student score on functions, okay? And here I can pick the scaled score, the performance level. I'm gonna show you the raw score here. And just so I know that this is what this column is about, like I said, you can call it anything you want. So I'm just gonna say that this is the column showing functions. I add that, I go back to my spreadsheet. Remember I had that baseline and now I added a column and I'm going to show an additional piece of data on this one. Just while that's loading, I wanna just point out a couple features. Let's just look and at the race reporting category. If I select this select all, when I click the down arrow, I can isolate a specific subgroup. So if I'm looking at AIG students, I can just click the down arrow. It'll have yes or no, or AIG. I think there's a couple categories when I look at it in SchoolNet. You can select which ones you want. And then the report will shrink down from 132 students to only the ones that have that category. These little lines at the top of the columns allow you to sort by descending or ascending. Um, so that you can put the students in order of their raw score, if you liked. And the other option for sorting is this between ranges um, category. So I can say that I, let's say I have a cut score and I only want to view the students that have a cut score between, um, we'll say 75 or 60 or below. So then I can put zero to 60 there, and it will then isolate the students that have scores in that range. So you get a couple different options there of how you can sort it. I apologize that my change feature is taking too long to load this in the training site, but um, that, is, yes. that is your option there. And as always, you have this save button here at the top once you click save, again, just like the previous reports, you have the option to save as new or save or update the existing report. Okay, uh, let me stop there for a minute and ask if anyone has any questions or comments um, regarding um, analysis spreadsheet. The first column with the students, just remember that you have the option of clicking on any student and seeing, uh, going right to that particular student's profile from that screen, okay?
Um, John, did I have any questions? And again, I apologize. That's taken so long there to get that going. Um, I don't see any specific to the analysis spreadsheet, um, but we had one come in. You mentioned building custom reports with transcend data. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a question if there are any specific known limitations to transcend specific to North Carolina. So say versus a South Carolina district that was buying it. Are there any different restrictions or limitations for North Carolina? I, I'm not aware of any, um, but I, I'm not sure exactly what we're referring to with limitations um, of, as far as how you're using the data or um, Barry, um, sorry, I don't know if there's if you had a clarification on that one. At this time, I'm not aware of any limitations um, between districts. Okay. Um, so I showed you the hide and show columns, um, just the sorting, um, this select all that I was trying to demonstrate if I just wanted to pick one, two, three categories, it would resort the data um, and change it. You can see it's working on a new selection of the test um, so, so that you can, um, you know, hone the report a little bit more. You always, with any of these reports, have the option to export. I did not show that feature on the bar graphs, but you can certainly export them as a PDF um, with the analysis uh, spreadsheet reports. You have the option to export to an Excel spreadsheet, um, which um, some districts find favorable. Um, you can, once you select data, you can either exporting, you get the option of ex exporting all the data or only your selected data, which is also a nice feature on that piece of it. Um, John, can we go back to the slide presentation just to um, see? And okay, so I just wanted to, I know I did the slide and then I did the custom ones and now I'm back to this one, but I would just want to um, show you this in case there was anything I missed from memory. Um, but the analysis spreadsheets, um, the, this slide is just showing you some of the features of, um, you know, you have the drop down, the hide and show columns, and the export, um, just like you had just seen on my screen. Um, next slide. Um, this is just a bit of, um, creating it, um, exporting it. You can build the analysis spreadsheet in multiple ways. You saw me demonstrate that by defining the student set or building from scratch at enrollment. Um, you can go to um, run the report. You have places to save it. Um, again, just to reiterate, it's the only one that has the students' names in it. Next slide. Um, and then this is just a repeat. This shows you the same process that I had shown you with the custom reports. But the only difference is if you start it with the base enrollment, you would click the second radio button to continue to analysis spreadsheet rather than build a custom report. Okay. Next one. Um, and this just walks you through some of selecting um, the columns, the data for the columns. Um, always go to the spreadsheet button um, to preview before you save to make sure it looks the way you want. And there you have some options that I've shown you in screenshots like days absent. Um, I've never used the dress, but it is there that it could be pulled in, gifted and talented. That's your AIG. 
Um, so you have that there. Uh, next slide. Arranging the columns, um, selecting, sorting the data, um, which was the last piece I demonstrated in the training site. So you can certainly um, isolate um, specific populations or data. Um, there you can see on this particular screenshot, you can see an example of AIG and English learners um, data pulled into the report. Um, so there's one of each students there, and there's probably more because this was a 3,000 student report, but you can see how that would show up in the column, and you could certainly um, isolate the students that are only um, participants in that subgroup. Next slide. These are links um, to the custom reports video. The second one, report library, when you click on it, it's, I think, 21 or some pages long, but it's the full uh, version of everything to do with reporting. Um, then there's QRCs for define and save a student set, uh, publishing reports, and then the analysis spreadsheets. So I saw a lot of chat coming in. Let me see if there was anything that we need to go back and answer. that one. Okay, so it looks like we had a lot of questions um, about people bringing in um, looks like standardized data and I'm definitely going to defer to John on that one. We can do it. Uh, we just need DPI to let us know that they would like us to load that information. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I can kind of kind of summarize. Um, so we had a question about the NCDPI innovative assessments, um, if there were any plans to run those through SchoolNet. As far as I know, anything that NCDPI accountability is working on will be through their NC test platform. That said, though, I can certainly talk to them um, and see if the results can be pulled into SchoolNet so that you can ana analyze those results through SchoolNet and allow your teachers access to those results through SchoolNet. So I will talk to my friends in accountability about that. Um, and then the same person also asked about getting the results from the NC check-ins into SchoolNet. Um, so if your district is doing the NC check-ins, we actually have a quick reference document that runs through how to import those results. The short of it is you have to create an answer key only assessment in SchoolNet. And then you can work with your testing coordinator to pull the results that they get in the secure shell and then import those into your answer key only assessment. And that will allow you to then analyze that data at the district level, school level, and even your teachers can see it at the classroom level. Um, so I dropped the link to that document in the chat um, and certainly feel free to reach out to me if you need any assistance with that. I know I helped. I think it was Winston-Salem Forsyth I helped uh, with that earlier this year, so. Okay. Um, I think that about wraps up custom reporting. Again, please just a reminder, this is just a high level, um, you know, what, options are available to you. If you have something in particular that you would like to work on for your district or school, please reach out to us and we will be happy to help you. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. And that brings us up to our reflections and, and sort of wrap up time. Um, so we'll start with sort of a breakout room debriefing. Um, so from the first breakout room, Yolanda sent me some awesome notes from that breakout session. Thank you very much, Yolanda. Um, and I, I see we got some answers out to, to some various different questions around the state assessments um, and things like that. Catherine, was there anything in particular that you'd like to highlight for the larger group? Uh, we actually just covered a lot of the logistics of 
Um, just a reminder that the state assessments, you are not able to copy them. Okay, that was one thing that um, I wanted to note. And also we had a request, John, um, I, I was, as we were talking, I wasn't able to go access it, but I think you had the request we before regarding the text complexity on the certificate ELA assessments, and I had sent a spreadsheet. So um, we can both uh, go back and find that after this and make sure we get it out to the larger group um, regarding the certificate ELA assessments. Cool. Yeah, the definitely. other, oops, sorry. The other piece, just a reminder, uh, we had a question regarding teacher vacancies. If in power school there a teacher is not assigned to a section and it, it is vacant, it says vacancy, when we schedule the state assessments, that assessment is not going to be going to that particular section. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, I know we had some help from uh, the other members in the breakout room um, offering some suggestions on how we could do workarounds for that, but there definitely needs to be someone assigned to the section in power school. Just a reminder. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Yep. Um, and I can say in the second breakout room, um, we covered a lot of, of PD topics and, and kind of just brainstormed some different ways that performance-based assessments might be used. Um, I know some of the ideas I've heard that, that I really liked and are, are kind of things I think I can run with um, as I develop more PD around that is maybe a social-emotional social learning slant to it. Um, you know, maybe assessing that through some means. Um, and also maybe goal setting um, and competency-based progressions and things like that. Um, and maybe some rubric-based assessments for K2 would be cool. Um, and certainly if, if anyone in the larger group has any examples or, or thoughts of how performance-based assessments might be used, um, feel free to reach out and let me know. I've been working on some materials for that that I hope to get out there for everyone very soon. Uh, but I want them to be as relevant as they can possibly be. Because um, I don't want a teacher to leave my training without something they can actually use at the end. So, um, Are there any other questions from anyone in the group? Feel free to drop it in the chat or even I think you can unmute yourselves. Um, if you prefer, um, but we do have 15 more minutes of the meeting. If there are any other topics that anyone would like us to cover. Um, and while you think about that, I will mention that we do still have our feedback form out there. Please complete the feedback form and let us know how we did today. We always look at these results and take notes for future sessions. And at the end of the survey, you can optionally provide your name and email address to receive a certificate for today's session, which is recommended for 0 0.1 digital learning competency credits. Um, and I see we did have a question come in about performance based assessments in school net. Um, how do you access them? So there aren't at this time, there aren't any pre made performance based assessments out there for you. So these would be things that you created within your PSU. Um, you know, really, for the most part, it's just taking a rubric, tying it to standards and getting that entered into the system. Um, but like I said, we will we'll, we're working on um, some training materials for that stuff now. Um, and I think in the future, we can certainly look at some options. Maybe we can come up with a set of rubrics that that are shared or, or something like that. Um, so certainly keep, keep any ideas you have coming my way um, as we try to sort of spotlight this, this feature. So I will leave you with our DTL home base team slide. Um, these are all the folks on the team here at DPI that are here to help you. 
and our email addresses are all linked. We've also got the feedback form bit.ly link at the top right there. So I will certainly hang out here for a little bit longer. But otherwise, I thank you all very much for joining me today. I hope that this has been a helpful session for you. And we will see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.